Hi, I'm Cindy Santa Anna, Integrative Nutritionist for the Amon Clinics and your Wellness Wednesday host. Today's topic is insulin resistance. When you go to the doctor and you get blood work done and you have a fasting glucose level over 100, this can signal insulin resistance. Or if you have an A1C, a hemoglobin A1C of around 5.6, 5.7, even sometimes the, some, some functional medicine doctors ha even say 5.5, that can be in that insulin resistance range. And then fasting insulin over 10 should be a warning sign that we need to really pay some attention to glucose and your diet and exercise. So I wanted to talk about insulin resistance, what that means and what's going on in the body. So when we eat um, carbohydrates or sugar, and I'm talking about mostly simple carbohydrates like breads and cereal, and pasta, cookies, crackers, bagels, muffin, croissants, donuts, rice, pizza, those type of foods with those simple carbohydrates that burn up really quickly. When we eat those types of foods, then we have insulin that raises and it tries to shuttle all the glucose into our muscles and our cells and our liver. And then the glucose will come back down. But oftentimes, if we eat another simple carbohydrate or another, maybe a sugary beverage or something else that has some sugar or simple carbs, insulin is still high. And then say we have a few hours that go by and we don't eat anything, glucose will come down. You might have some low energy, but insulin is still elevated because it takes a lot longer to come down. So um, even when you wear a glucose monitor, so a continuous glucose monitor like the Freestyle Libre, you can see that your glucose has come down, but your insulin may st still be elevated, and that is where we have insulin resistance. So those cells have now become resistant to the insulin because you've been ringing that doorbell too much, too many times with eating simple carbohydrates. So too many calls for um, insulin. So next week I'm gonna talk about ways that you can reverse insulin resistance, but today I wanna to leave you with this little tip, and that is um, to have some space in between your meals, in, including at night, um, maybe closing the kitchen at like seven o'clock and night eating for another 12 to 14, 15. Some people can go a little bit longer with 16 hour intermittent fasting. That is one really great way to have some space in between meals so that the body can bring those glucose and insulin levels down and have what's called autophagy. So the clearing out of all that debris and clutter and, and whatnot. So intermittent fasting is important, but also not snacking all day long too. So, you know, have breakfast maybe two or three hours after you wake up. Some people need to eat right away and that, that will take time because you need to become fat adapted versus being sugar adapted. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this next week, how to reverse insulin resistance. So make sure you're asking your doctor for your fasting glucose, your hemoglobin A1C, and really important to get your fasting insulin done the next time you have your blood drawn. All right, take care. Mm -hmm.